Hi guys, uh, Mike Glover here, Philcraft Survival. Today I wanna to talk about our mobility loadout system, which is right here in front of me. It's all of the soft equipment that we offer for utility and preparedness for your vehicle. Man, I, I have this thing where I use a Trojan horse to secretly bring preparedness into your life. That Trojan horse, the vehicle behind me, not my 91 Vanagon, because you're not that cool. It's your vehicle, your Honda Civic, Come on, a lot of you guys got Honda Civics. I know you follow me. I had that. Front wheel drive Honda Civics are a good vehicle for bugging out if loaded out correctly. But we use your vehicle, the overland experience, the off-road, the camping experience, to educate people on what they should have as capability, but also thinking about their vehicle as a logistical resupply platform, as well as the bugging out or potentially bugging in. If something's bad happening like like right here, like this is happening and it's very bad. You wanna get away from the bad. The wildfires we just had in Colorado where tragically in Boulder County, a thousand people lost their homes. Several people died, a couple people, uh, which is a miracle, but hurricane gusts and winds came through, ripped through that area and what was their bug out platform? Their vehicles. But how the vehicles are loaded, what things they're thinking about in preparation for loadout and bug out are significant and important. And this is the equipment suite brought to you by Philcraft Survival to allow you to think about it in the right way. So let me go over it really quickly. First things first, the visor panels. We wanted to make visor panels that gave you access to life-saving equipment. If, for example, you need survival or you needed first aid, stop the bleed, even a tourniquet, you could have it within arm's reach. That's very significant in preparedness. When you need it during a catastrophe, you probably need it now. So we have both segments of both passenger and driver, which allow you to keep one side of the panel on the visor, and then if you need to, rip away the entire panel to be able to react to a casualty. Even potentially ripping away first aid because you know, it's trauma you're dealing with, not a survival scenario. All right, now that's out of the way. Moving forward, I want to talk about our mobility bags. So our mobility bags are, from my personal experience in a tragic vehicle accident, where I try to save a buddy's life, but I had all of the life-saving equipment and first aid tethered to Molly on the back of my seat. Now, that's cool because it's a military-type thing, right? You got this Molly attachment right here where you attach it and it's adaptable with all these pouches. But the problem is, is if it's tethered to Molly that's tethered to your seat, you can't get that package of first aid and move to the casualty. What I had to do, in fact, is reach in, pull all the contents out, and then maneuver to the casualty with a handful of crap that I dumped all over in front of them. What I did was when I designed this, we focused on, sorry, this is a little sloppy. You can clean that up. I'm just feeling sloppy today. Um, you got first aid, survival, a general purpose pouch, and all your Molly goodies here. As an example, it's got loaded out stuff that would be in it. You know, an upgrade of your first aid here. But again, the ability to rip it away and be able to move to the trauma. It could be you, by the way. Uh, we also did that because if you're sitting in your seat and you needed to reach behind you or across from you, you can grab that, get this big handle, and rip it away if you're upside down hanging from your seatbelt uh, in a traumatic injury accident. Why did I say it like that? Wow, you, you get me though. So when I have this, it's accessible equipment where there's no excuse. Um, don't recommend putting this knife tethered to here if you got kids, unless you wanna get stabbed in the back. That's what kids do. So if I did this and I converted it by simply detaching it from the seat and zipping up the bag, well, then I have a bug out bag. Now, I'm not just thinking about bugging out, guys. I'm thinking about, like, let's say you're camping and you want to camp and you want to go beyond your car. You park your car at the, at the parking spot at the campsite and then you go to hike. Well, most people won't carry their life-saving gear and equipment. Now you have no excuse. You detach top and bottom, put it on your back, and it's a low-vis backpack that you take on a day hike and never be without your gear. Oh, and if you had a catastrophe, like the worst-case scenario of it, Let's say you're stuck in a winter storm and need to bug out from your vehicle to get help, which has happened in recent history, like the last couple of weeks, you know, with all this crazy weather that's going on this winter. You could take this, detach, and have survival, first aid, and 
all the things you think you need for general purpose. All right, so let me take a step back because I'm going to migrate to this. Now, here's what I did for you guys because I wanted to line out uh, in the layout how you should organize this. This is our 20 liter bag. This is the loadout series. That's 20, 40, and 80. This 20 bag happens to be an everyday carry bag for me that I would put on the passenger seat. Yeah, inconvenient for my passenger, but why do I want it there? Well, it's small in form factor. I could actually sling load this by, look at that, no rehearsal, rapidly deploying a, a, a single strap top or bottom of the bag. And when I have my gear here, it's all the life-saving gear I need to defend my life and bug out of my vehicle just in case. You gotta leave your vehicle behind. When I was in GRS and special operations, we had a plan always to disintegrate to the ground the vehicle we're in. We kept a thermite grenade that would burn the vehicle literally to the ground. I'm not advocating for thermite grenades, guys. But what I'm saying is this needs to be somewhere readily accessible for the driver or the passenger for security. So I have my P365 XL. I have my navigation. I have my first aid and med, all tethered here with the same system integrated. I need survival. Well, now I could pull survival separate from the pouch. I need a range bag. We even sell a range bag insert. Look, what we're trying to do, what I'm personally trying to do is make no excuse for you not to have preparedness type equipment. So there's no excuse. So here, this is like more personal stuff that I need ready access to. And then I migrate to the 40. The 40 could be in the back seat, but again, it's not in the trunk. This is somewhere where I would have an upgrade to my level of sustainment. You know, this whole thing, like three seconds without air, uh, you know, three days without, sh or three hours without shelter, three days without water, 30 days without food, that's all imperative. And here is the upgrade of your life-saving equipment. Again, just like with a single strap, I have the ability here to pull dual straps that are mo more load-bearing to be able to put it on it like it's a backpack. But again, no excuse not to have first aid survival and all the things that you would have. Uh, ready hour chow, right? 72 hour bug out chow. Last but not least, let's migrate to the 80 liter. So 80 liters, this can fit a person, not a dead person weirdo and not a live person weirdos, but we've done that. We've actually put Ricky in here and this is good enough for load bearing 100 plus pounds. I'm not advocating you put people in here, but what I'm saying is this is the one that's in the back. This is like in your trunk if you have a car. Or if you have a diamond back cover, I'm going to do a video for my truck, especially for a, a winter setup, uh, a diamond back cover that's lockable. This is inside of the truck bed that's locked. This is going to be your maintenance, recovery, um, all the things that you don't care that are getting dirty. One of the things that we did with this bag is we kept it slick so you could easily clean this out. You could turn it inside out, hit it with a garden hose or just a wet rag and all that dirt and grime is gonna be clean. So it's not like nylon, it's actually PVC. So again, maintenance, recovery. We're talking about all the things that you would use to uh, maintain your vehicle on the road, uh, snow chains for your tires, uh, even shackles and recovery straps. That would go in here. So as you can see, the loadout, this is the mobility loadout system or MLS, is critical for your vehicle, giving you the capacity to be able to load out the appropriate things in your bags. Now, I'll do videos later talking about specifics for me personally, but one of the factors that are going to matter the most in this case is environment. So your Montana loadout is gonna be a lot different than your Arizona loadout. But I wanted to give you guys the suite, talk about it, give you the understanding of why we put this behind it. And for the first time, via the link below, we are offering this entire system together with a profound discount. Um, we will offer the loadout versions at a latter time. By the time you're seeing this, we will have it so you can get everything for the vehicle. Um, it doesn't matter if you got a Honda Civic, Toyota Tacoma, or a $100,000 Land Cruiser. This is the appropriate loadout basic necessities for being prepared. So I get a lot of questions routinely. Uh, what are you wearing and what's going on? And most significantly, there's going to be 100 comments about this ring for the people who didn't make it this far into the video. This is an aura ring. This is not some weird goth, whatever you're into. No offense to goth guys and gals. Um, 
but this is measuring my heart rate during the day and night. When uh, Aura sends you their kit, they tell you to measure it off your index finger, which I did. So I'm running Aura off my ring to measure my vitals because I'm taking health, especially my sleep, more seriously this year. Patagonia loft jacket that I was issued in special operations. Um, SIN, S-I-N-N, Uniform 1 watch, dive watch. I also go back and forth between this and the Aris, the A-R-E-S, former CIA buddy of mine. Cool pants and Origin made in the USA leather boots. I, I know it's weird for some of you guys. Like, why are you telling us all this stuff? Because we get the comments and the questions, and so I might as well just put it out there into the Ethernet. Till next time, peace out. Later, guys.